Hello, everybody. Uh, ah, Software Agents TV. Hello, happy Friday to you as well. I also hope you are well. Hello, Ben Kirkland. I am not past the tanker part yet. It's taken me forever to get to the to get to the point here. I've been playing this on the PS2. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think I got a little bit wonky about the controls for the Xbox, so it's been a little it's been a little bit weird for me. I'm out of ammo. So we're gonna have to I, I don't know what tactics we're gonna be able to use to to get through here. I think we might have to use some kind of stealth. For Ah! Stand by. Okay, now everybody, please help me out by letting me know if you can hear me. Is my microphone working? What state do I live in? I live in the great state of California. Stand by for one second. Okay, was that a yes that you can hear me on the mic? Is, is my microphone plugged in, I guess, is the thing that I'm trying to ask. Okay, good. Uh, one of the reasons that the game audio may have seemed loud is that my son is asleep in the next room and I'm trying to be a little bit more uh, quiet. That's exactly what we needed, fellas. That little fuck face that I just beat the shit out of. That's exactly what we needed. You're probably hearing my loud ass washing machine. Give me just a second, hold on. I 
Actually, I don't think you are hearing my loud ass washing machine. I don't really know what you're hearing. How how does the noise sound? Hold on a second. I'm going to have to actually go the stream. Hang on a second. Yeah, the audio is really weird. Um, okay, testing, testing, one, two. Just a minute. Hang on a minute. Sorry, sorry everybody. Technical difficulties. We'll get this we'll get this sorted out. Thing one, two. I'm going to go ahead and proceed as though that's good. I've reduced the game volume considerably, and hopefully that will solve all our problems. Yeah, I think that sounds, from my point of view, that sounds a lot better, and I think we're all going to be just fine. Oh, shit. Oh, this couldn't have gotten worse. Less loud now. All right. What's going on, Snake? What's going on, Snake? Snake? 
Hmm. Well, at least I'm right where I want to be. <laughs> That's not the. <laughs> that was the. That was the opposite of the thing that I was supposed to shoot. Did I do that? It's been a long time, guys. Like, once again, um... Snake, respond! Snake! Snake! <laughs> uh... There's an old saying in California, maybe it's in Tennessee, but it's in California, they say, uh, Fool me once, shame on... You. You fool me, you can't get fooled again. Have I played Modern Warfare? No, I have not. Somebody help me out here. <laughs> Which of these things am I supposed to shoot? I got that one, and then there was that thing. Oops. Hmm. 
Haha. Hi, Leland. Where is this little fucker? Look for the green lights. Right, right, but that's what I'm that's what I'm asking is uh where is this fucking last one? I remember this part, I remember this part got me stuck for a little bit last time too. Now there's no way I can crawl under this, right? <laughs> Maybe we'll finish Persona 5 tomorrow Sunday. Cool. I don't think there is, but I'm damn well gonna try it. Oh no! <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I feel like I'm wasting your time. I'm having fun now. <laughs> no. Now where's fuck? Now what is it? You oh shit! Oh, that's. No, get in there. What the fuck? Okay. Maybe this one? Oh, fuck me. Use the goggles? Oh, yeah. Music sounded happy that Snake dies. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha, that's right.
the last one you have to climb on the platform to say yeah that I I I remembered. Tunnel bridge check. Point passed. All non-essential personnel report to the holds in ten minutes time for the scheduled briefing session with the commandant. Commandant Cloud. Continue manning your posts until that time. Chinese have a saying, those who are lost never question a path, and a drowning man doubts not the shallows. And it means, means that you need to make use of other people's help, otherwise you could be in trouble. If you're lost, you don't even know whether a road you come across is a right one. And, uh, what's the difference between shallow and deep if you've already drowned, right? Anyway, the point is that help is always a good thing to accept. So make good use of the codec. Look, this stuff seems nothing like what Mei Ling used to talk about. <laughs> hey, she couldn't do better herself. Ugh. I'm gonna have flies all over me, aren't I? Motherfucker. Oh. Time out. Stand by, guys. Okay. All right. Let, let, let's do this shit. Oh. All right. Break time. Oh, my wife brought me a, uh, ice cream sundae kind of thing from Wendy's and it's amazing. <clears throat> she just came home so I wanted to say hi. Fuckface. Oh shit! Damn it! God damn it! Oh, Dan, you have the codex sound as my ringtone. You thought I was calling you. That's funny.
radar when you're in the alert phase, it's of no use. <clears throat> Okay, um... Son of a bitch. As you can see, I'm... They know where you are, but just crouching. <laughs> yes, well... Uh, as you can see, I'm quite proficient in the stealth genre. Playing on PS3? No, I'm playing on the Xbox, actually. On the Xbox One. So the... and I, um... I had usually played on the Xbox One up until very recently when I started playing all of these games over again on the PlayStation, because, you know, that's the platform that they were on, and I, I skipped that one, so I thought I'd give it a try in its original habitat, and I've been really liking it, but the problem is... When I go back to these, I'm a little bit wonky with the with the old controls. <clears throat> what difficulty setting? Normal. Also under our control. We are on the foredeck, about to descend to the holds. Sir, the Marine Commander has started his speech already. We will complete the preparations before the end of the speech. All communications to the holds have been severed. No one is aware of our presence. Let no one down into the holds until we are out. Yes, sir. We will secure your exit with our lives if necessary. There is one more thing. Yes, sir. Sorry, Colonel, but I knocked your daughter the fuck out. Oh! Who goes there? Right, hold on. Sorry, guys. Hold on a second.
My suspense. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a lot of technical difficulties tonight. Um, I'm going to try to get past this tanker section. But I'm not 100% sure. All right. Bastard bitch. up for too long. Ever save a thousand times to listen to all of Otacon quotes? Yeah, actually I did. I I like those exchanges in, in all of these games. Alright, let's do this right this time. YouTube. Yeah, that's great. Oh fuck, I didn't even realize they'd thrown a grenade. What's going on? Snake! Snake! <clears throat> Damn, I'm having a bad run, at least on this tanker section. There's about 15 of them, yeah. And I can't aim for shit. I'm really having a hard time, uh... God damn it. Ugh. Let me do it. Yeah, go ahead. Snake, respond. Snake, snake. So, were you more on the positive or negative of Rise of Skywalker? I was on the positive. I liked it.
God damn it. Fucking shit. Press your back against the cover and swing out the shoot. Uh, okay, I'll try it. Oh, hey, look at that. A ration. What do you mean? Shit. God damn it. Why isn't it? <sighs> Snake, are you okay? Did you see the Robert Burnett Snake. video describing Colin Trevorrow's original script? I don't know what any of that is, to be honest with you. I love how you get the sea lice out of the ration in the game. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't let you use the box's cover? Uh, I don't think it does. Here, hold on. Fuck face. As soon as I get a beat on him, they fucking pop away. Oh, God damn it, I hate that. God damn it, get up. Fuck, come on. Move your ass! Jesus Christ. Snake, respond. Snake, snake. All right. We're going to do this another way. What? Why? Why? I guess we're not going to do this another way. Jesus. Yeah.
That's right, punk. Want to speak to a man by the name of Revolver Shalashaska Ocelot? Damn, Ocelot ain't fucking around. to the deck are all sealed. What are they planning? If they get Metal Gear, we're going right off the fringe. You're all familiar with the Shadow Moses. The men down here are definitely Marines. The current state of nuclear... If the deck is sealed off, they have no way of knowing that the ship's been taken over. I'm not interested in fighting these guys. The weapons won't do me much good here. Can you see Metal Gear? No. I'll have to go around the bow. They have some serious defenses here. I doubt the recent arrivals want to blast their way through the Marines either. Wonder where they're headed? I don't know. Not the beach, that's for sure. Okay, Snake. Let's go over this one more time. Use this camera to get photographic evidence of the Metal Gear prototype. Now do your thing and take pictures that speak louder than the government's plausible denials. We need four shots. Metal Gear from the front, front right, and front left, and a close-up of the Marine Corps marking. Marking? There should be a Marine's insignia on the body of Metal Gear. Just let someone try explaining away a clear shot of that. Metal Gear? All right. There's actually one little thing. Just spit it out. I'm used to things going wrong. It looks like someone's monitoring our transmission. Who? I don't have a clue. All they're doing is watching. It would creep me out less if they tried to interfere with our communications. Could it have something to do with that cipher we saw? Maybe. I've switched the encryption protocol for our burst transmission for now. What I want to do is use a different method for sending these photos, just in case. Instead of using the codec? Exactly. There's a workstation in the southeast corner of the block where Metal Gear is housed. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what people, so <clears throat> those of us who were born in the 80s and grew up in the 90s, referred to as a computer. I the U.S. military's proprietary network, managed to get into that workstation and overwrote a part of the system software so I could remote install a little app I wrote. Why bother with anything that complicated? No, it's pretty simple, really. Look. All you have to do is stand in front of the machine and push the action button. The app will automatically launch and download the image data from the camera, split the files, and encrypt them individually. The data packets can then masquerade as... Okay, okay. So all I have to do is push the action button in front of the computer once I have the pictures, right? Well, sure, if you put it that way. <laughs> and one more thing. The Commandant's already begun his speech, but you need to get the pictures before he's done talking. Otherwise, they'll spot you, okay? How much time do I have? I hacked into his personal files and took a look at the text of that speech. I'd say you have seven more minutes. Longer if he throws in a joke or two. A seven-minute time limit, huh? 
Remember, Snake, just the photos, okay? With these kinds of odds, I won't be making any sudden moves. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean we can just let Metal Gear be hijacked. Okay, okay, but first the photos. All right, we'll deal with the rest when we get there. Stay low. At the moment, every industrialized nation on the globe knows the All right, guys, here. Metal I'm going to save this here. I'm going to wind this down a little bit. I'm going to try to get past this speech part, but, uh... Oh, you need to save? Just a sec. But it's, uh... You are feeling asleep. <laughs> I am also feeling asleep. Give me... Um... Acquaintances agree. <coughs> friends argue. And that's a straightforward one. The better friends you are, the more openly you can disagree with each other. So feel free to present a counterpoint if you don't agree with what I'm saying. Argue away. Sure. All right. Not a promising start. Okay, forget what I said. Just go along with my advice. <laughs> Worse yet, so do a number of rogue stakes. They are all working on deploying their own Metal Gear Force to compete with the U.S.'s nuclear strike capability. The world is about to see a swarm of these Metal Gear derivatives. We initiated development of Metal Gear Ray as a countermeasure to these pirated weapons forces. The only thing that can stand up to a Metal Gear is, of course, another Metal Gear. With Ray, the hundreds if not thousands of Metal Gears that exist all over the world are no longer a threat. The blind rush to nuclear proliferation will be contained, and it will be the Marine Corps and our Ray that will accomplish this. This weapon will render all other Metal Gears obsolete. Nations building up their own Metal Gear <coughs> will think twice about their nuclear strategy in the light of the military dominance spelled out by Ray. The shift in the balance of power will mean a new world order. So weird seeing an old game. Hold on a second. Brands, especially those with submarine and air backgrounds. Not to mention interference from major players. With save data that says 2020, yeah. Just not something I'm used to. I like the 80s idea of a computer. It just feels so much more computery to me than a flat, flat screen monitor. I agree, it's... It was, uh... <coughs> technology was still sort of mysterious and magical in those days. It be more different in nature from the Navy's. Theirs is a program that will add fuel to the uncontrolled fire of nuclear proliferation. It is a fact that players in favor of such a policy are attempting to derail the Ray project. I have a daughter. It is my greatest wish never to have her or her children experience the horror of nuclear war. As a father, I want to leave a better world for the future generations. As a soldier, I know that is my dream. This turned out to be longer than expected. At ease, rest a little bit. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. Come on, Snake. Move on. Metal Gear Ray is amphibious. Unlike the army threats, it can cruise deep. You're all familiar with the Shadow Moses incident during the Sears administration. The current state of nuclear proliferation is a direct result of that event.
Metal Gear. Metal Gear? Its onboard Joint Tactical Information Distribution System identifies targets with uncaring accuracy and takes them out with massive firepower. It is the ultimate weapon. <coughs> Snake, you want to save? Okay. While I'm saving this, listen to Otacon. I'm going outside to smoke a cigarette. I'll be back in just a minute. Do you know the saying, one forgets the hurt once the wound is healed? And that, of course, means... Did you say something? No, nothing. Uh, so, uh, forgetting the pain when the wounds healed means, um, th th that you have to get better fast. Yeah, that's it. So stock up on those rations and bandages. Is that really all it means? Hey, I'm the expert here. All right, thank you for your patience, everybody. Let's do this. Let's let's get out of this fucking tanker section. It is yours to go. I'd like you all to think about what that means. This new model of Metal Gear is codenamed Ray, after the Great Manta Ray. Our Ray has a sting that nature never gave the Manta. With this latest Metal Gear, we can rule the sea and land as we never have before. have intelligence that there are anti-Metal Gear terrorists planning to target the ship. Intruder to the left! Oh! What? Intruder to the right! <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Intruder to the left! I think I can do a little better than that. Should that actually happen, I expect you to be prepared. <laughs> that actually, we that actually startled me slightly. Stay on your guard at all times. Good. Okay. How's everybody doing? What's everybody up to? To move on. George Sears surrendered his presidency in the aftermath of Shadow Moses. 
The official reason given did not, of course, include the development of Metal Gear Rex and next generation nuclear warheads. But even you have heard rumors that he was forced to resign after the failed cover up cost him his influence in the political community. The Metal Gear Rex development on Shadow Moses was supposedly the first preparatory. Good. Taken against the future, the possibility of reduced nuclear defense capability. NMD technology leaked to other nations would make that contingency likely. But if this theory is correct, means that there was a calculated intent to cash in on this opportunity by specific interests within the military-industrial complex. We are here today to flush out and rid our country of these corrupting forces. That is our mission. You will bear that in mind. The proliferation and development... Nothing to see here, you looky-loos. ...render agreements like the N... ...BT and START obsolete. There are also forces at work trying to exploit this disturbing trend to further their own power and influence. The human race is about to slide back into the endless arms race of that last century. And we cannot afford to play that Russian roulette again. The Metal Gear Ray you see is here to prevent that possibility. Good. The brain drain of nuclear specialists in the black market trade and weapons grade plutonium has been fueling a cottage industry in nuclear weapons since late last century. Add metal gear to the mix, and the result is the renewed proliferation you see the world over. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon. You once lived Pardon. in the shadow of the doomsday machine. This metal gear ray can bring other metal gears under control and ensure that we never know that fear again. We, the Marines, will be the guardians of this peace. So, any codec moments from you, Snake? The first image is... I'm sorry, you need to take another one. Yeah, that one sucked. And the next one is... Okay, this works. It's a great front view. What's next? It's almost right, but not quite. We can't use this. The next <clears throat> image is... This is great! The Marines lettering shows up really well. What's next? You already took a good one of the side lettering. Okay, last one's coming up. We only need one good shot of the lettering. Metal Gear Rays, so I need another one from the left? What the fuck? By an onboard pilot. Wait. In its final form, Ray will be unmanned. Driven by you just got home from eating pizza. Cool. The importance of next generation technology such as C4 <coughs> ISR and RMA in battle situation has been discussed time and again. But Ray is the first to deploy it so fully. With Ray's completion, Marine Corps will lead the way for a new age of military tactics. The National Missile Defense Program was initiated in the end of the Good. Projected to completion in 2005. However, the NMD. 
Okay, wait. What what am I What am I missing? Looks like I have your photos now. Take two shots of middle grid from front right and front left. Oh! Okay, front right and front left. Well, okay, whatever. Here, here's your fucking front right. Good. There was no technological solution in sight, and the program was already attracting strong criticism from Russia and China for its potential violation of the anti ballistic missile agreement. And here's your fucking front left. Good. President Sears forced the NMB proposal to just in case there's another front left. Some say that it was a military interest. With plans for the $100 billion program budget that actually arranged the legislature. Don't forget to thumbs up the stream to support Danny Gabe. Thank you so much, sir. I'll get out of here now. We, the Marines, will lead the charge into a new world order with Metal Gear Ray. That is all. Dismissed. Jesus, cat! You almost fucking killed yourself. My cat just knocked over my. Excellent speech, my friend. Who the? Gift of the silver tongue. They say it's the mark of a good officer. And of a liar. Americans are too in love with the sound of their own voice to speak the truth. Identify yourself. <laughs> I am Shalashaska, also called Revolver Ocelot. What do you want? This machine will be quite useful. What are you planning to do? Steal this thing? Steal? No, no. I'm taking it back.
This ship now carries enough Simtex on its key structural points to blow it out of the water at the touch of this button. That's right. No one has to die needlessly. Streets. I was raised in Znezinsk, formerly known as Chelyabinsk 70, the nuclear research outpost. What are you talking about? After the Cold War ended, my home was bought out by the Americans. Is there a point to this sad story? Not you would understand. Land, friends, dignity, all sold to the highest bidder, the United States of America. Even the technology that gave birth to these weapons is Russian, developed by us. What do you intend to do? Russia will rise again. And Ray is the key. I regret to inform you that I have no intention of selling Metal Gear. As I said, I came to take it back. Oh. Yes. Returned to the Patriots. The Lale Nule Lo. How's that possible? Arcelor, you have you sold us out? <laughs> I was never in your employ, Kalukovich. Are you still in league with Solidus? No hard feelings, Colonel. Mother Russia can rot for all I care. Since when, Arcelor? When did you turn? I'm glad you noticed, comrade. I abandoned her during the Cold War. Metal Gear only has room for one! Lukovich, you and your daughter will die here. Damn you! <laughs> like you were long overdue for retirement. Traitor, stop! <laughs> Ocelot is cold-blooded! To live, I suggest you run now. This ship is still in the lower New York Harbor. You may yet make it to shore if you swim for your life. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's been a while, brother. Who are you? You know who I am. Liquid? Not so young anymore, eh, Snake? You're drowning in time. I know what it's like, brother. No wonder Naomi passed you over for the Fox Dive program. Ouch! Get out of my mind, mind Liquid! <laughs> Physical prodigy. Few more years and you'll be another dead clone of the old man. Our raw materials are vintage, brother. Big Boss was in his late 50s when they created his copies. But I, I live on through this arm. Look at all. That was his jacking off arm. All the energy was there. I actually feel bad for Gravolovich, Gravanovich, whatever the fuck his name is.
as planned, sir. we discussed. Yes, I have photographic evidence of Snake on the scene. The cipher was most useful. I look forward to tomorrow morning's news flash. I would say the Marine Corps' plans are on indefinite hold. Yes, of course, Mr. President. Who would win in a fight between Snake and Big Boss in their prime? Big Boss, for sure. Big Boss, no, there's not even any question about it. Snake, do you remember the sinking of that tanker two years ago? Of course. Terrorists blow a hole in an oil tanker full of crude barely 20 miles off the shore of Manhattan. Your classic nightmare. It didn't take long for the government to put an oil fence around the whole mess. And then that massive offshore cleanup facility went up inside. The big shack. I hear the cleanup isn't quite over yet. It takes time. But in the meantime, the shell's become a landmark, a symbol of environmental protection. And here we go. This was new, and nobody knew who this was. Nobody knew what was going to happen next. Approximately six hours ago, the big shell was seized by an armed group. Do we have an ID? Former members of the Navy SEAL Special Anti-Terrorist Training Squad Dead Cell. Russian private army members may also be involved. It's a highly trained group, and they have the big shell under complete control. Sponsored tour going on at the big shell that day. Hostages, huh? A VIP from one of the major conservation groups, and one from our own government. The most important person in a sense. The most important person? James Johnson. The president? Unless the demands are met, the terrorists intend to blow the big shell out of the water. And the crude will ignite, turning the Manhattan Harbor into an inferno. That's not the worst case scenario. If the chlorides being used to decontaminate the seawater go up with the oil, toxins containing catastrophic levels of dioxins will be released. In other words, the bay's ecosystem will be wiped out, and the sea will turn into a toxic soup for centuries, becoming the worst environmental disaster in history. You have two mission objectives. One, infiltrate the offshore decontamination facility Big Shell, and safeguard the president and other hostages. And two, disarm the terrorists by any means necessary. You should know that SEAL Team 10 is also conducting a rescue operation. Is this a joint effort? No. Foxhound remains a covert body. Don't alert them to your presence. That is an order. This is Snake. I'm now inside strut A of Shell 1. How are things? We're in luck. 
Looks like there are no sentries posted here. What's the visibility? The lights on the plant struts are functioning. I won't have to use the IR goggles. Any problems? There was a brand new hole cut through the oil fence. There's someone else besides me that wanted to get in badly. That's not possible. What about SEAL Team 10? They landed on the roof of the big shell as planned. And by the way, Snake, we're changing your code name for all following communication. What's wrong with Snake? Just a precaution. You are now designated Raiden. All right, Raiden. You've already covered infiltration in VR training. I've completed 300 missions in VR. I feel like some kind of legendary mercenary. Okay, we'll skip that part. Make sure nobody sees you. If you need to, contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the back <coughs> button. When we need to reach you, contact you, the codec will beep. When you hear that noise, press the back button. The codex receiver directly stimulates the small bones of your ear. No one but you will be able to hear it. All right. I'll contact you if anything changes. First, make your way to the upper section of the big shell. How do I get up to the next level? There's an elevator at the far end of that area. Use that. Sounds good. Your new sneaking suit uses electrofiber technology, a byproduct of fiber optics research. The texture isn't far removed from rubber, but the material protects against a wide range of toxic substances. The suit itself has a wide array of built-in sensors. It is referred to as smart skin in military R&D. Data about damage to different regions of the body, including blood loss, is exchanged between the suit and the intravenous nanomachines to create a feedback system. There's a lot of pressure on my torso. Relax. The suit applies varying pressure to major internal organs to maximize performance and safeguard their functions. They call this the skull suit in Foxhound. Skull suit seems appropriate somehow. The hatch with a circular handle will open into the elevator area. Locate the hatch first. Copy that. Moving on to main mission objectives. <coughs> and here he is, Raiden. The real main character of this game. something about if I remember correctly I might be barking up the wrong tree here but there was some thing over got your feet wet these are the basic controls for swimming Stroke the water and move forward by pushing the punch button.
sighted an enemy sentry. AN-94 and a Makarov. Those grenades, all his equipment, is Russian-made. Must be a Grelukovich man. Grelukovich? A Russian private army that was in line to work with the Shadow <coughs> Moses takeover group four years ago. What's their stake in this one? They must have made a deal, an arrangement with the terrorists. They become a band of mercenaries, an army without a country. Definitely another intruder in here besides me. That's not a possibility. Not a team. Looks like a solo job. One man. We may not know who he is, but he managed to take care of every sentry in the area. They're all out cold. Whoever he is, he's got some skills. We need to get an ID. But for now, you can take advantage of the situation and get to work. There's a terminal in front of the elevator. A node. Did you say nerd? Not nerd, node. <laughs> oh. Use the node to gain access to the Big Shell's facilities network. Then what? Pull up the map of the structure. That'll let you activate the Soliton radar. The Soliton radar? True. That radar came in useful during VR training. A radar system uses biological magnetic fields as input. These estimated enemy positions are projected onto a map according to reference points collected via GPS signals and field personnel reports. We need to get to the map through the Big Shell's node to put this data processing to practical use. The node unit is about three feet high, should be colored blue. Each area has at least one. How do I gain access? Just push the action button in front of the node. The nanomachines in your body will take care of the security clearance and allow you access to the node. Complete the procedure before those sentries gain consciousness. If they spot you, you won't be able to gain access for a while. Stay on guard. Got it. <clears throat> should be functioning now remember your VR training sessions the tool is exactly the same one it maps the terrain as well as the position of enemy personnel 
The bright dot in the middle is you riding. Oh. Darn it. <clears throat> okay, there's Rose. She's a part of this mission. I wish I hadn't skipped this now. I forgot she's going to talk. <clears throat> so Rose, his girlfriend, is the mission analyst. And she's providing support, and he's mad about that. The foxhound analyst that was supposed to take part in this mission was in an accident. Rosemary was brought in as a replacement. An accident? And according to these files, she knows you better than anybody else. Rose may be <coughs> in the ser <coughs> Rose may be in the service, but an intelligence analyst is no field officer. Not to worry, she has our technical staff at her disposal. She's never been a part of the field mission of a field mission. This is insane. I have my own reasons for selecting her for this mission, soldier. Colonel, I failed to see I know your VR training performance in and out, but sometimes that's not enough. You're familiar with the Shadow Moses incident? I you know I covered it in VR. If there's a crucial tactical detail that Case taught us, it was the power of the operative's will to survive. I was trained to fight. My personal feelings have no place in a mission. We've learned that it doesn't work that way, and on the field you need all the help you can get. Jack, you're stuck with me whether you like it or not. Rose, you need someone to watch your back, but I have conditions that need to be met, Colonel. What is it? I'll perform my duties and save that mission data but I'm aware that technically I'm not part of the mission control team. After all, I'm just a normal girl who's worried about Jack. <clears throat> but that means, Colonel, that I am not required to follow your orders outside of my immediate duties. Jack is not simply a field, pers a field personnel for me to track. His safety comes first to me, not the mission. And because of that, I will be monitoring and keeping a record of every communication you have with him, Colonel. Given the circumstances, you're free to do what you see fit. Hey, I prefer this to being kept in the dark waiting. I'd like to make a request, if I may. Of course. His handle is Ryden. For the duration of the mission, could you call him that? Yes, sir. All right, Ryden. Let me know when you're ready to turn in a save. I just switched the frequencies. Jack? What? Do you know what day it is tomorrow? April 30th. Is there something special about it? Isn't there? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Oh well. Keep trying till I hear the answer. I'm going to let you go now, Jack. Take care. The reason I read that is fuck I wish I hadn't have skipped over so that they were actually talking because that's super important. Oh shit. Right. The enemy sentry is regaining consciousness. Be careful, Jack. Find somewhere to hide until the elevator arrives. You must stay out of sight. Who's that? What the fuck? Ah. I was pretty sure I did a decent enough job of getting behind that wall. Come on, you motherfucker. I <laughs> keep doing it. It's the enemy. I need
So, here's the thing. Little, uh, meta spoiler here. Hideo Kojima wanted to do something different with this one, but he was under a lot of pressure from the studio and fans alike to just do Metal Gear Solid again. And everybody was oh no, we want to play as Snake. We want to play as Snake. I don't want to play as Raiden. Um, but everybody, <clears throat> everybody wanted to play as Snake playing basically the first Metal Gear Solid again. So he made a game where this guy, right, where somebody who wanted to be Snake did Metal Gear Solid again. <laughs> That's part of this meta narrative about Raiden, and I find that brilliant. The first part of the game is what the fans... It was just fan... Oh, shit! The first part of the game was just fan expectation. It was it was a one-to-one -one of what Kojima was sure the fan base wanted for Metal Gear Solid 2. This second part of the game is a meta-analysis about fandom and about the desire to... Um, this desire to play as this hero, the desire to be the hero, what that really means. The terrorists call themselves Sons of Liberty. Sons of Liberty? The name of their leader is Solid Snake. The hero of Shadow Moses? So that's why you changed my code name. Right, but he can't be the Solid Snake. He died two years ago on that tanker after he blew it sky high. Could he have survived? Not a chance. <laughs> I'm on the roof. There are no sentries, but it would only take one to spot me in this light. You never had daylight VR training after all. Stay extra sharp until you can find a node to log in from. What about the commandos? SEAL Team 10 has landed on Struts B and C. And the President? Seems he was spotted on Strut B. Strut B? The big shell is comprised of shells 1 and 2. Each unit consists of a central core and six struts surrounding it. So the whole thing is shaped like two hexagons connected end on end. Exactly. And you're on the roof of Strut A, Shell 1 at the moment. First, get to a node. Log into the network. Got it. <laughs> that doesn't get old. Raiden, look at that wire fence. You may be able to crawl through it. Crouch down using the crawl button. Raiden, SEAL Team 10 is in. Do we really have no line of communication with the SEALs? They don't know a thing about us. You know we work in the dark, and this mission is no exception. Only a few people know about your presence here. 
<sighs> There's no need for concern. This operation is under Pentagon's direct command, and the NSDD came from the Vice President and the Secretary of Defense. Your mission may be top secret, but it's gone through the usual channels. <clears throat> What's up, Jack? Jack, do you remember what day tomorrow is? That again. I'm sorry, but I still don't have a clue. That's okay. What is it, Rose? Talk to me. I'd rather you figure it out. It's important. How important? Important enough, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Why not now? Tomorrow seems more appropriate. I need all the help I can get so that I won't chicken out anyway. Is that the reason you decided to be part of this mission? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna finish this thing by tomorrow no matter what. You know I'll do everything I can to help you. Rose, there's something I need you to do as an analyst. What is it? It has to do with Solid Snake. The leader of this takeover incident is claiming that he's Snake himself. The legendary mercenary? Hmm. I need as much data on him as possible. Everything they have on him after the Shadow Moses incident. He's dead now, isn't he? Yes. Should be a burial record somewhere, too. You should be able to request top-level security clearance from the Colonel. That should get us into the most classified material. I'm on it. I'll contact you as soon as I find out something. <clears throat> First floor to you, okay? Understood. Colonel, I've located the node, but it's under heavy surveillance. I can't get in any closer. Distract them. Try making some noise to draw their attention away. How? Flatten yourself against a... You see, one difference between Snake and Raiden is that Raiden has a... Uh, there's my radar. <clears throat> There's somebody there. Raiden has a personal life. He has a girlfriend. He has a a person who cares about him, and who is uh, sort of there with him throughout this whole thing. And Solid Snake doesn't, because Raiden is. Hold on. Raiden, watch your back. That's a cipher. A type of UAV. If it spots you, it will alert enemy personnel. Exercise extreme caution. But you can use chaff to set up an interference field. That'll knock its sensors offline for a while. Try to locate some chaff. You can also destroy the engine or the camera. Some of the UAVs may be armed. Be careful. <clears throat> All right, presence life's in danger. So Raiden is a stand-in for Metal Gear Solid fans. He is the quintessential, I hate to say this, but he's the quintessential fanboy. 
He studied all of Solid Snake's missions in VR. Basically, it's the fans that had played Metal Gear Solid again and again and again and again and wanted to get in and have a sequel that was just the same thing because they were so damn good at Metal Gear Solid. <coughs> Unlike Snake, Raiden has a personal life and has people that care about him because Raiden is you and Snake is just a fictional character in a video game. There will be a lot more about that as this game goes on. The, that's not the only meta narrative here, but that's one of them, and it's the one one of them that I found extremely interesting. And I don't have any chaff grenades, do I? No, I don't. Oh shit! So you have to wait. <clears throat> Solid Snake had Meryl, yes, but he, d but that Meryl was somebody that was. Hold, hold, hold on a second. Solid Snake had Meryl, yes, but Meryl was somebody that he met in the context of the game. He wasn't somebody back home that was part of his personal life. He was somebody that, she rather, was somebody that was a part of the big adventure slash thing that he was doing at the time. <clears throat> he formed ties with Otacon and all that kind of stuff, but, w but what I'm saying is he didn't have a he didn't have a friend slash love interest slash personal life that people in the sense that uh, Raiden does with Rose uh, that's what I'm saying I don't know if, I'm reading some comments here I don't know if Kojima intended this but the president in this game all the talk about it being a seemingly tight election that was rigged reminds me of Bush versus Gore in 2000 uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that was, uh... Damn, I wish they would have gotten together. Oh, Snake and Meryl? Yeah, I don't know. And how controversial that election was. I am the female version of Solid Snake without the military stealth skill. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. The, uh... Raiden is a stand-in for fan expectations, and Kojima is showing you that this is what that leads to the, the, this is and not not this is what that leads to in a even in a like a negative sense but he's showing you okay this is what you this is what this really is <clears throat> I'll, I'll have a lot more to say about that as the as the game goes on but wait I think there's a note over here but I might get spotted because I'm I'm not being very <coughs> oh, 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 how do I get up there? Oh, how do I get up? Oh, I, I think I, I think I remember. You gotta drop down from the ceiling. This game predicted drone strikes. Did this game predicted... Reddit. This game predicted almost everything. Because he... Oh, shit! Uh, get over here, fuckface. Don't carry out that investigation. Oh, I don't have any... I don't have any fucking key cards. This game predicted Facebook. Um, yeah, again, it, it really predicted a lot of things. And it, it didn't... it didn't just predict... <clears throat> It's funny, it's not like Star Trek where it just predicted the technology. It predicted how we were going to use it and how it was going to affect our lives. And the really funny thing is, this game, as you 
pencil aid and software agents uh, well know, because you're talking to me about these elements of it, talks a lot about the internet. And there is another Hideo Kojima game that talks a lot about the internet, which is the new one, Death Stranding. And they both have very, very different views on the internet and its, um, what happens when we're all connected to it and what we do with it and how it affects us and how we interact with it and what it does to society. The difference between the two commentaries on the internet are night and day. And I find that absolutely balls to the wall, batshit fascinating. <laughs> Give me that porno mag. It did not predict Pornhub, though, because there are still porn magazines, as you can well see. Okay, I need to get me a damn keycard. Oh, shit. Shut up. This is where I was supposed to go, folks. Oh wait, I still got my ah, Um And they were right on the money. They predicted Right. Right. They predicted that we would get multiple online friends and that we would not talk to each other much. Do you think something like the Patriots exists in the real world? No, but I do think that... I do think that governments go about pursuing their interests in the morally gray way that these games depict. That, I think, is absolutely, absolutely accurate. In metal. G oh, I didn't end up getting the porno. Oh. There, give me that shaft grenade. Um. All of these nations are just kind of doing what they think is best for the world at large and for their own peoples, and I think that that is an accurate representation of the motivations of could Hideo Kojima does not portray evil because the concept of evil is kind of oh shit you fuck off because the concept of evil is kind of bullshit. Unable to look 
locate the AWOL soldier. Nothing else to report. Damn it! I'm under attack. Stay alert. Ah! I was so excited about getting that damn magazine that I, I fucked this all up. Come here. Fucking magazine. Fuck. Close one, though. Oh, good. I didn't think it would be this tough. Hey. It's the helplessness of it, you know? Just watching with no power to help you. It's like having a ringside seat at a boxing match, but much worse because it's someone I love and the stakes are. Rosemary, maybe this was a miscalculation on my part. Selecting her wasn't the wisest choice. No, no. I apologize for the outburst. I'm all right. I will see this through with you. Rose? We fight together, okay? You have nowhere to run, neither do I. Rosemary, you're not obligated to continue, you know that. I'm all right, sir. Hmm. Raiden, how about you? I'm good. Then the mission goes on. But Rosemary, there's one thing you need to understand. Sir? His name is Raiden. Got it? Yes, sir. I understand. Whoops. I actually didn't mean to go out here. Ah.
Yeah, that's what's cool about the Metal Gear franchise as a whole. It's about the character interaction. Solid Snake is the hero, mm -hmm. but he's done his fair share of... Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I was reading the comments! Shit. What's up, Amp? You are so 90s.
day. Or rather, six. Get down! Not an enemy. Calm down. My name is... My name is Pliskin. Iroquois Pliskin. Lieutenant Junior Grade. Rope descent from a Navy chopper. Have I seen you before? That suit. Are you Foxhound? That's right. Foxhound was disbanded. Huh? Where were you before Foxhound? Delta Force? I was part of the Army's Force 21 trials. Force 21? That's about tactical IT deployment, right? Any field experience? No, not really. So this is your first? I've had extensive training, the kind that's indistinguishable from the real thing. Like what? Sneaking mission 60, weapons 80, advanced VR, huh? But realistic in every way. A virtual grunt of the digital age, that's just great. That's far more effective than live exercises. You don't get injured in VR, do you? Every year a few soldiers die in field exercises. There's pain sensation in VR and even a sense of reality and urgency. The only difference is it isn't actually happening. That's the way they want you to think, to remove you from the fear that goes with battle situations. War is a video game. <laughs> what better way to raise the ultimate soldier? So you're saying that VR training is some kind of mind control? Right. What's going on? The Alpha team from Navy SEAL 10 is dead. No, a single survivor. The kid's wired with nanomachines. What about the President? Looks like they took him somewhere else. I see. You said there was a survivor from SEAL Team 10. Yeah. Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin. Has he seen your face? What? This is a top secret mission. 
No one can know that we're involved. It's a little too late for that. What's up? Take a look. What the hell? A Navy captain. Must have lost a few more pints than I thought. What was that man just now? That blood sucking freak? That was Vamp. He's Romanian, a wizard with knives, as you saw. The way he moved didn't seem human. You won't see that in VR, I guarantee. What is he? One of the members of Dead Cell. Dead Cell? Him? A special forces unit created by ex-president George Sears. The name was originally intended to reflect its anti-terrorist functions. The unit would launch unannounced assaults on government complexes for the ultimate terrorism simulation. They were needed to show VR troopers like you how to deal with the real thing. <laughs> VR troopers. But around the time their original leader died in prison, the unit began to unravel. They were always close to the edge, but they became more and more extreme, began to go after U.S. allies, even civilians. We estimate that no fewer than a hundred people died as a result of accidents the dead cell arranged on their own. They were out of control, and it all came to a head six I'm going to pour ago. through comments what here happened? when this is all over. The this unit was devastated. Thing. There are only three left now, and you just saw one of them. Why would they go after the big shell? How should I know? I told you they were on the lunatic fringe. What about their leader? He says he's Solid Snake. Snake died two years ago. You mean the incident that made this big shell necessary in the first place? Right, and he was the one that sank that tanker. But he's a legend. Legends are usually bad news. There's not a lot of difference between heroes and madmen. Hmm. You're saying Snake is still alive and pulled another one? No, he's not involved in this one. His body was positively ID'd two years ago. Snake is dead. And buried. What about the other soldiers? I saw Russian equipment, too. Former Soviet military. They're probably mercenaries. The big shell is too much ground for just dead cell members to hold down. You weren't briefed on any of this? And you came in alone to boot? Why? What are you really doing here? Can't tell me, huh? Fine with me. I don't smoke. Keep it anyway. May come in handy. Take this, too. Aren't you going to answer him? The BC connecting bridge. We need to get there. Can you handle it? I need a few more minutes. Remember my frequency. It's 141.80. 141.80. Got it. I've been briefed on this plant's layout. If you need information on the place or about Dead Cell, contact me. You're using nano communication, right? Yeah, but I can patch into your frequency. Hey, what's your name? Raiden. Raiden? Strange code name. Makes up for the boring one my parents gave me. Maybe I'll find out someday.
Okay, that was Hideo Kojima having a heart-to-heart -heart with his fan base. Just saying. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the comments here because a lot of them are very interesting. Uh, so give me just a minute before I get back to the actual gameplay. Big Boss is basically the Darth Vader of the series, and then Kojima made us see his side of the story that led him on his dark path. Absolutely, yes. Um, and let us know that he... There was a... I saw a review of Metal Gear Solid Five where somebody said, Why am I earning heroism points in a game where I'm playing as Big Boss? Because Big Boss is a hero to the people who love him. <laughs> That's why. Um... I remember when this game came out how much Raiden was so hated by the fan base by the, or by the fans. Guys, not you guys who are listening, but people who might feel that way. Guys, Raiden is the fans. That's the point. That's that's the whole message behind this. It talks about so many things on a on a meta level. Uh because we wanted snakes, said Ben Kirtland. Kirkland. Yes, but it's it's not real. And also, yes, it's because they wanted Snake, and they wanted another Shadow Moses, and they wanted just a slight update to Metal Gear Solid 1 because they had all played it so much. That's why uh, Raiden was saying, oh yeah, I did all these virtual missions and all these missions over and over and over again. That's exactly what the fans were saying, and they just wanted, uh, they just wanted a copy-paste of the last one, and they didn't even really realize it. Uh... And, of course, Raiden was trained as a child soldier. Oh, spoiler alert! <laughs> uh, yes, and so were we all, according to Kojima, with playing these, these video games. Uh, and he was responsible enough to to uh, tell everybody that... Wars not make one great, said Solid Snake. Uh, Snake is a bad liar, and how the hell would a Marine know about Foxhound? They were top, top secret. Yes, indeed. Well, Snake doesn't have to be a very good liar when he's talking to Raiden, my dear friend. Uh, did you notice that Jack, Raiden, and Rose is a reference to the Titanic? Is that a direct thing? Was Did this come out around that time? I can't remember what year this came out. This came out in 2002, right? Yeah, that was after that. Jack and Rose. No, actually, I did not realize that. If that's a one-to-one, -one, that's also pretty good. Or you live so long that you become not PC. What does it mean? I'm trying to... F uh, Philip... Philip Kelton. W th was that a follow-up to something that you said above? You live so long that you become not PC. What do you mean? All right, so da, da, da. Raiden is the fans who just wanted another Metal Gear Solid. Kojima made another Metal Gear Solid, B basically just a copy paste. I mean, the beats and rhythm. This he arrives in the water with a scuba suit, and he comes out and he goes through basically. Never played any of these games. Oh, I highly recommend them. That is not a Trank gun. So it's it's the same beats and rhythms as the first game. Or you live so long, you become not PC. It was a joke. I I'm I was pretty sure it was a joke, but I don't know what I don't know what the joke means. P what does PC mean in the context that you're using it? Apparently, my first comment didn't go through. Oh, okay, that that makes sense. Because no, I, whatever it was, I I missed it. Sorry for the spoilers, I thought everyone here played Metal Gear Solid 2, I'm pretty sure everybody has. It's a 20-something year old game, I'm not, I'm not vexed by it. I was, I was kidding around.
Oh, God almighty. And um, Dead Cell, um, in the description of what they were and why they were founded, they were there to give... Uh, what the hell is that? It's somebody with a force field, dude. Uh, they were there to show... Come, put me out of my misery. VR trained people what real combat is like by... Giving them something to fight, they were they were literally in the context of this world. They were designed to be boss fights, and the, and the same quote unquote reviewer that made that stupid comment also said, "Oh, the 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 the, the villains in this game aren't nearly as fleshed out as in the other." Yeah, because they were just meant to be boss fights. That's part of the that's part of the commentary of this game, Don't moron. Today is another bad day. Is there anyone here that can give me happiness? She wants to die. But nobody can kill her. That is her curse. That and the fact that she has really nice legs. For a video game. Isn't the woman here the daughter of the general who died in a tanker? Yes. I'll see you again someday. Team 10's Bravo team was wiped out. I see. What happened to the cargo choppers? Both of them are at the bottom of the harbor. Looks like your new hosts have a Harrier too. A Harrier? What is this? Calm down. It just means they anticipated the attack. What? Besides, since the SEALs drew their fire, your infiltration went off without a hitch. On top of that, we know their defensive capabilities. Are you saying this was all a feint? Raiden, get a hold of yourself. The entire mission is in your hands now. Do you understand? But... There's no time for questions. They could decide to retaliate for that failed assault. You mean the hostages? They could be in danger, yes. But we need to consider the possibility that they'll blow the whole shell. If that toxic spell does take place, it'll devastate not only the harbor, but poison the coastline for generations. <sighs> Raiden, we've had to adjust the mission objectives. The priority is now on removing those C4s that the terrorists wired over the big shell. The president can wait, but this can't. Colonel, you know I'm no bomb disposal expert. That's not a problem. The Bravo team brought an explosives pro in with them. He was supposed to stand by on Strut C according to their mission plan. You should find him there. Is this according to simulation 2? What are you talking about? Get to Strut hmm. C and find him. Understood. But I need to ask you something before I go. Make it quick. 
Who are they? Dead Cell, I mean. They couldn't hit her no matter how hard they tried. And that vampire, too, it's... it's like... It's like being in a nightmare you can't wake up from. Jack, snap out of it. And you, Rose. I can't believe you're on this mission. I keep thinking I'll wake up. Raiden, this is real. And that's why you won't wake up. But nothing seems real. I've made up my mind to stay with you. Whether this is real or a bad dream, I'll keep watching you till it's over. Thank you, Rose. And I won't let you be just a dream. Are you two done? Raiden, you're needed on Strut C. And the lad has a difficult time distinguishing between fantasy and reality because of how invested he has become in his VR training, which is a stand-in for playing Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> uh. You know, as a follow-up to that observation that I just made, I have a similar... I have a similar um, issue with uh, people who people in Star Wars fandom. People who talk about oh, what is this? Is this naked? Uh, oh, look at that! Look at that low-res, low-quality image of a buxom young woman. Uh, and it's on the ew, and it's on a the inside of a bathroom stall. Ah, oh, ah, oh, gross. So anyway, um, people in Star Wars fandom who talk about canon, what is and is not canon, and why, I, I think they are very Raiden-esque in that sense. Um, the ones who treat it like a, uh, almost as if it's a real series of events that has some kind of, like, discernible, uh, real timeline or whatever. Well, I just want to look at one more thing in here. <clears throat> one of the things that I... Yes, I'm going to have to uh, take care of that eventually. I already know what that is. One of the things that I tell them when I talk to them about the issue of Star Wars canon is that though I very much appreciate their enthusiasm, as I think enthusiasm is becoming a... a very stigmatized thing, I have to impress upon them the reminder that Star Wars isn't real. <clears throat> ah, I love this guy. I love this guy, I love this guy, I love this guy. Freeze! Don't shoot. You a cop? I'm not NYPD. I came in with the Bravo team. Who are you with? And what happened to SEAL Team 10? They're all dead. All of them? Oh, that's bad. Did I tell you you could move? It's all right. He's not one of the bad guys. But don't go pointing that thing everywhere, kid. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Peter. Peter Stillman. I'm lecturer at Nav Scolio at Indian Head. Also a consultant for the NYPD bomb squad. A poor old man who got dragged along for this picnic. I thought you'd retired. I did. Can't keep up with everybody, as you can see. A famous church got wiped off the map thanks to me. With too many lives inside. All I lost was this leg. So you're the bomb disposal guy.
kid, this is the bomb disposal guy. Open any explosives disposal textbook and you'll see his name. <laughs> Just ancient history now. Why did they bring you out of retirement then? Because the terrorist group here includes one of my students, the Emperor of Explosives, Fat Man. He built an atomic bomb when he was only 10. Damn. <laughs> I created him in a sense. And that's why you're here. I'm pretty rusty. I was supposed to supervise the bomb disposal. Looks like it was taken care of before I had my turn. I wouldn't say that. There are at least two people here who can claim to be experts at bomb disposal. Are you two with SEAL Team 10? I didn't see you at the mission briefing. Oh, we're with another squad. My name is Pliskin, Lieutenant Junior Grade. Honored to meet you, sir. Mr. Pliskin, do you have any experience with explosives disposal? Don't worry about me. And he looks young, but he can do it. But we need more manpower. I'm, uh... What's your name? Raiden. That's an odd name. Any other survivors? There was also an engineer with me. An engineer? A skinny guy. He went in with us. Where is he? I haven't seen him since that skirmish. Was he killed? I don't think so. I didn't find his body. I see. They told me he was a security systems architect for the big shell. Why would they take a civilian along? Everything in this structure is computer controlled. He was supposed to get us past all the security measures. I never heard anything about that. He had official orders with him. Hmm. We'll leave that for later. Right now we need to figure out how to deal with all the bombs. But there's no one left from the SEAL's EOD squad. Yup. So we have to do it ourselves. But I've never defused a bomb before. Hold on a sec. Off to confer with the CO again. <laughs> Glad to hear Stillman is safe. Assist him in any way possible to clear the C4 from the structure. Colonel, you know I've never been trained in bomb disposal. It's all right. The man you're working with is the best in the field. All you have to do is follow his directions. You will, of course, keep your identity and mission objectives to yourself. Is it true that an engineer came in with Stillman? I wasn't informed of that. It's probably something the SEALs decided on their own. Hmm. There are more important issues at hand, Raiden. The enemy may retaliate for the failed assault. Get those C4s neutralized now. Colonel, I'm not qualified for bomb disposal. Jack, it's me. Rose? You can do this. Trust me. You haven't had bomb disposal training per se in VR, but you're more than capable of handling C4. This is a little different from using C4. You're up for this. You know that. Because you used C4 in Metal Gear Solid, but you didn't dispose of bombs in it. There's no need to think about this so much. You won't actually be dismantling the bomb. That's not for amateurs. What we'll try here instead is a temporary freezing measure. Here, look at this. This is a C4 bomb. It's live. You can see it pulsing. I'm gonna respond to comments as soon as this part's area. over. There we go. Simple, huh? The spray freezes the detonator instantly. How long does the effect last? There's no way the thing can detonate in this condition. Even if you leave it alone, it'll stay out of commission for at least 24 hours. That's enough time. If we had the manpower, I'd recommend complete disposal. But this will have to do. The spray can be used from several yards away. Now check the floor, ceiling, walls, under a table, everywhere. Try to imagine the locations the bomber would choose. That won't be easy. We don't know a thing about Fat Man. Is there anything that'll help us locate the bombs? Here, take this with you. It's what they call an ion mobility spectrometer. It can recognize ionized gas emitted by C4s. The what? In other words, that little gadget sniffs out C4's scent. That's right. I have established a link up with your radar network, so any scent detected will be represented visually. Have the sensor activated and keep your eye on the radar. What if he's using some other odorless substance? I know Fat Man well. I know how into his own aesthetics he is. Signatures? Yes. On every bomb he builds, he always leaves a trace of the cologne he uses. 
The sensor also picks up that particular scent spectrum. Is that something he learned from you? No, it was his own quirk. He wouldn't work by any rules except his own, and he followed them like a religion. And common sense wasn't one of his strong points. I thought I taught him everything I knew. I have no children of my own, and I thought I found a son in him. He had the right stuff, you know. There's something very unusual about an ability like that. Even at Indian Head, he got special treatment. I remember some people called him one of the fat cats. <laughs> Maybe that's what started all this. I didn't teach him the most important thing I had to tell him. There are some things you have to pass on. The trick is to know which one. Right. All I taught him was skills. And now I have to stop him from using it to destroy us all. Let's see how well that sensor works. All right. I'm activating them. Watch. You see the green stuff on the radar? That's a visual representation of the C4 scent detected by the sensor. It's a pretty big area, isn't it? Don't complain. It's better than nothing. Just activate the sensors and search the area, okay? All right. Don't forget that you need the radar to use this system. Log into the node at every strut and turn the radar on. We have to keep out of the enemy's sight, too. Because the radar gets knocked offline when we're spotted? Exactly. Fat Man would have allotted some C4s here in Strut C as well. Here? I know the structure of this facility, and if he wants to take out the plant, where he would target? You know this for sure? Of course. I taught him the techniques he uses. His ideas are based on my theories. Demolition is a kind of ideology. It makes no exceptions for time or place. Big Shell consists of two hexagons joined in on in, north to south. There should be packets of C4s on each of the vertices, or the struts in this case. You need at least that to take a building of this integrity out. Hmm. Six on Shell 1, another six on Shell 2. A total of 12 bombs at least. Considering the shell's architecture and composition from an engineering standpoint, that's my conclusion. And it's exactly what he would have decided as well. Kid, this place is all yours. I'll take care of shell too. Take this. What's this? It's the thing I didn't have that kept getting me killed when I went the wrong way. <laughs> the big shell security layout includes varying levels of clearance. The clearance level is identified by the number printed on these doors. Raiden, your card key can open doors for security clearance level one. Pliskin, your card can get you into level three areas. You needed to get next door to shell two. How did you get this? That engineer I told you about gave it to me. He was supposed to program a set of all access cards once we were on site. Unfortunately, this card won't get you into every area of this structure. We'll have to deal with the remaining security lockouts as they come up. Let's get going. You stay here. No, I'm going. The two of us can handle it, don't worry. But... You'll just slow us down with that leg of yours. There's a war going on here. I don't have time to babysit anymore. Why don't you just let us handle the grunt work? You can tell us what to do over the radio, like in the original mission plan. All right. I'll give you instructions from here. I may also need to prepare a backup plan, just in case. In case of what? Good luck to both of you. This is a dangerous one. Who dares? wins. If anything comes up, let me know. My frequency is 140.25. Good luck, kid. I'll see you later. Semper Fi. Hmm. That man's no seal. I don't even think he's a Navy man. What? Semper Fi. It's Marines. Marine Corps talk.
Normally, team leaders stay in the CP and give orders with those headphones. And as far as I know, SEALs keep their officers away from the field. And who dares wins is a model of the British Special Air Service. Is he one of the terrorists then? No, somehow I don't think so. If there's someone to suspect, I'd put my money on you. Hmm. <laughs> I'm a... Just take care of those bombs for now. What about you? They could be back in this area soon. I'll hide out in this pantry for a while. If I lock the door, it should be all right. Plenty of food in here, too, so you don't need to worry about me. I'll give you instructions by codec from here. Good luck, kid. Bomb disposal is a face-off with your own mortality. Don't let the fear get to you. When you give in to the fear, the darkness comes. Damn. Okay. <clears throat> So an interesting thing before I'm going to read a lot of comments here and hello Jonathan Ramos I see you right at the right at the bottom there, uh, but uh, one thing I wanted to say about this um, with uh, Raiden representing Metal Gear Solid fans wanting to just play Metal Gear Solid again and talking about how great they are at it and how excited they are to get into another one. Um, they're like we love Snake we love Snake, right everybody we want to play as Snake we want to play as Raiden but. Snake is in the game. His character is a lot more nuanced and developed. You see sides of him that you don't see in any other Metal Gear Solid game. He is in this game prominently. You don't love Snake as a character. You want to be Snake. You wanted to be Snake in this game. And the deeper you get into the game, the more you realize you are playing a snake. You have the same mechanics, you have the same abilities, you do the same superhuman feats as he does, and you realize by the end of the game, you're impressing upon this Raiden character exactly the same things that you would impress upon Snake. It's a, it's a, it's a projection of yourself that you're putting into the game. But your desire to when you, when you actually get Snake as a as just a character when he's been disconnected from your ability to be him, you hate it. That's that that's weird and interesting, and worth thinking about. Um, when I was talking about Star Wars canon, I want to go over that briefly. Um, what I mean by that is can't, the I, the whole idea of can't, something being canonical in fiction is a form of tyranny. I think it is. I think it's. I think it's a symptom of the sort of authoritarianism that we're falling into in our culture. Nobody can tell you what art means. Nobody can tell you that your interpretation of art is wrong, and there is no, this is the critical one, there is no authority that can tell you what art means, including the artist. Um, I'm going to play this clip in a YouTube video one of these days, but Nick Meyer very, very accurately said that artists are people who put messages in bottles and they throw them out in the ocean and that's the last they see of them. They hope that somebody will find the bottle and pop the cork and read what's inside. But, said Meyer, the artist isn't going to be there when that happens. <laughs> and he can't stand over your shoulder and tell you, no, this is what this means and if you don't think so, you're you're incorrect and um, and he's absolutely right about that. There is no definitive interpretation of this game, or any game. There is no definitive canon of anything. Uh, I read the Thrawn trilogy right after I saw The Force Awakens, because I liked the... I, I, it made me think about 
the time period after the original movies and how much I enjoyed those books and I read them. And no executive from Disney came and wrested the book away from me and said that I couldn't read these anymore because now they've changed the way that this goes because they didn't change anything. The, the prequels didn't change anything. I don't watch Star Wars, the original Star Wars, A New Hope, and see it as a sequel to Revenge of the Sith. Those three movies don't exist for me. They, they don't exist in that same universe for me when I watch it. For others, they do. It's not, there is no authority on that. You are the only authority to how you perceive things. And your, um, all individual perceptions are valid when it comes to art and fiction and you cannot take that away from people <clears throat> uh so let me read through a few comments here before i get to i'm really bad at the fat man fight so <laughs> i'm let's see world building is a thing for stories yes no issue with world building actually star wars is real well it's real in a way it's a fictional story but it is real darkness doesn't exist but it is real i agree that it is real in the sense of this is that's what this game is saying is look how real this is to the people who played it and how invested they are in it but the problem with things being canon or not is the fact that stories are the cultural myths of our time um, yes, there is something to that, definitely. That's a software agent said, yeah, that's something I've come to appreciate from what you and Dan do in your commentary of media, is that there is a difference between plot and lore and storytelling. Uh, yeah, it depends on who that's important to. People watch, some people watch Return of the Jedi. When I watch Return of the Jedi and I see Boba Fett, I see some anonymous person in a suit that dies five minutes after he's introduced in that movie. Other people see this massively detailed person who's had this whole history that's important to every facet of Star Wars, and that's cool. Uh, it's, that's, that's very creative. The, I'm not into the extended universe of uh, Star Wars, but people who are, I really admire them because they, it requires a lot of imagination. Do me a favor, dear viewers, when you get a chance, not now because you have to keep watching my video, but when this is over, Type into YouTube, Quentin Tarantino Top Gun, and you'll hear him give a humorous interpretation of Top Gun. But here's the thing, that interpretation is valid, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's awesome, and it requires a lot of imagination, and I love stuff like that, and we should be, we should be appreciative of that kind of thing. Um, the problem is, says Philip Kelton, the problem is... The problem is this cultural icons and stories are also brands. The business side of art sometimes kills the art. I mean, it's hard to explain, but when you realize the things you hold dear are just shells for businesses to make money, it gives people an existential crisis. Um, well, when you think about that, you do. I think that people are far too aware of who the businessmen who own media companies are and what they're saying, and I think they're far aware, far too aware of the promotion behind things. I think, um, I think they're far too aware of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and it, t I think it's robbing people. Uh, that's one of the things that I liked about Death Stranding, is that everything was kept so secret. There are very few secrets and surprises anymore in, uh, in media, because everybody's constantly listening to people that th th all this stuff should be a little bit more mysterious than it is. I try to ignore that stuff for just that purpose, because it, it removes you from the... it takes you out of the experience. If you're sitting in a Star Wars movie and remembering something that Kathleen Kennedy said in a, on that platform for children, the thing with the bird or whatever, and that's part of your the way that you're watching the movie, you're not engaging in a in an artistic experience. You're thinking about a business person. So yeah, I I would avoid that. Um, who's the voice of the black guy? Uh, and then someone answered Greggy. Greg Eagles, who played Grimm in The Grimm Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I didn't even know that. I, I hardly watched that show, but I know of it. The bomb disposal was actually an idea that the game makers came up with a few months of development. Awesome. And hello, Jonathan Ramos. Konami forced Raiden's name to be written using kanji as opposed to katakana 
because they were afraid it would be misread as Raiden slash Laden Osama bin Laden. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. 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 I wonder... Mm, interesting. I view art like I do morality. Art and morality are subjective. Uh, it, when it comes to moral dogmas, absolutely, yes. Uh, if you are going to say that art is subjective, I'm going to tell you... Okay, hold on. Pencilloid said, I take it you don't agree with Sam Harris's view on morality or Ayn Rand's view on art. I d I'm not familiar with Ayn Rand's view on art. If it's anything similar to her view on anything, you can just automatically assume that I don't. And no, I don't agree with Sam Harris's view on morality. I don't think he has a view on morality. I think he just doesn't like religion. He 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 wrote <laughs> one of his arguments in the um the moral landscape was that well let's try to think of the most maximum suffering that anybody could have or let's think about what did he say um think about uh if a uh, i can't remember exactly what it was but he gave a scenario of like a muslim carrying out a terrorist attack or something or this that and the other thing we would all agree that that's really bad but he doesn't actually tell you why it's bad he just says that we would all think it is i don't know that no i don't know sam harris is a is an idiot Philip Kelton said, "Art is not subjective. Art is very, uh, oh, this, um, it, it is, it is. But hold on, Pendezoid responded, art is very subjective." Philip Kelton said, "The prequel change what people will remember of Star Wars." Uh, no, not no, not really. It, and also I don't I don't understand how that could have anything to do with the subjectivity of art people's interpretations of the prequels will be subjective too. Art is subjective, objective, and collective. I agree with that. I certainly agree with that. I'm glad you put in collective. That's a very, very, very good um, um, descriptor of what art is and its experience that most people don't um, that most people don't include. I'm very glad you said that. Uh, Pentazoid said, I don't like people going back in time and claiming that certain art is offensive like blackface or old Looney Tunes cartoons and that such art can never be appreciated. Um, I don't think that saying that it's offensive means that it can't be appreciated. I don't have a problem with people acknowledging the fact that things like blackface were very derogatory. and But the point of saying that it's derogatory is and should always be to point out how frightening it is that that was... It, it was just normal back then uh and and that we can we can normalize things that are terrifyingly abhorrent and just see them as not even an issue that's the point that should be taken from something like that and that's why um those those forms of art from that time period should be uh what was the movie the song song of the south disney needs to fucking release that movie and have a big commentary about it throughout uh, because it's a at the NAACP at the time that the Song of the South was released before they went into their dissertation about what was wrong with it first the, opened by praising it for its quote remarkable artistic merit end quote you can view these things as having artistic merit and then talk about the problems with them I think that's a very good point uh, there is stuff in art that is subjective but there is a lot of crap that is not I don't know what could possibly be objective about art. Uh, something to add, the people hating on Kathleen Kennedy are assholes. There is a lot of fake perception of things going on on the internet. Uh, I don't even barely know who Kathleen Kennedy is. I've just heard her name and apparently I'm supposed to be mad at her and I've deliberately gone out of my way not to, uh, not to figure out much about her. Uh, Jonathan Ramos says, Gone with the Wind is another one. Pentazoid said, There is a very complex history of blackface that I won't get into. It's not completely racist, and it's not completely derogatory either. I will say that. Well, th I don't know about the history of, of it being done. I don't think that we can s use the intentions of the people that were doing it to say whether or not it's racist. Whether or not it's racist is whether or not it ends up um, stigmatizing and... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, caricaturizing a group of people uh, intentionally or unintentionally I think is the uh, the only criteria by which we can say that it was racist it doesn't have to have been intended to be derogatory 
So back to the game. Now that we're now, now that we're done with my whole dissertation about all that shit, in in the immortal words of in the immortal words of Blazing Saddles, never mind that shit. <laughs> Here comes riding. Oh 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 oh. Yeah, I know where this motherfucker is because I already saw it. I didn't need no sensor. I already knew where this shit was. Um, how do you... Okay. Ah, thank you. Raiden here. I took care of the C4 in Strut C. The ceiling of the women's bathroom was set to blow. That's not like him. Anything wrong? Maybe. Pliskin's reported other locations too, and none of them are effective demolition points. What do you mean? It means that they wouldn't be the best places to choose if you wanted to destroy this place. Are you saying they don't plan on blowing the shell up? It certainly seems that way. So far we haven't seen anything but a waste of good explosives. Unless, of course, we're missing something. A trap? He couldn't have overlooked the fact that I would be called into this. There's something going on. <clears throat> uh, Philip Kelton said communication in historical context is really objective. Is it? Is it objective in North Korea? What about the former Soviet Union? Pentazoid says, what do you think of Emma Emmerich, Otacon's sister? Um, she was she was meant to give Otacon exactly the same experience that he had with uh, Sniper Wolf in the first game. You're... He's giving you a rehash of the game just like you wanted, but he's going to tell you something important about yourself and about art and about heroes and about video games and about culture while he does it. I <laughs> fucking love this game for that. Uh, Software Ranger said, Emma sucks and then she dies. My least favorite part about the game. But she, but that was the point! But that was the point! Uh, I also think it's interesting that her initials are EE, -E, and in Death Stranding, an EE -E is an extinction entity. He likes those initials, it seems. Jonathan Ramos says, Gone with the Wind has been accused of perpetuating the lost cause revolutionist history of the American South. Yeah, I think it did at the time, too. That's a, it's a, it's a fair enough accusation. I mean, it's just an accusation. It's it's just a it's just a thought, and thoughts can't hurt you. Oh wait, I think there was another one in there, wasn't there? Emma was so lonely. Did you say lonely or lovely? I'm not wearing my glasses. Lonely. Sorry, I'm old and my eyes don't work. I will be 39 next week. Jesus H. Christ. I don't know how much um, to... Um, Mr. Kelton, I don't know how much you watch Star Trek, but your comment about, uh, about communication and history, and history being... You didn't say history. You said something else that was important... Uh, an important distinction um, the historical context uh, is objective it reminded me of uh, I don't know how much you watch Star Trek but it reminded me of General Chang's observation that you've not you've not experienced Shakespeare until you've read it in the original Klingon whoa who saw me oh my god how did they get in here where did you come from oh you were in this bathroom stall you fucker I was too busy talking about art, and now I'm losing video games. Fuck. <laughs> um. Right, come in. Raiden. Raiden. Uh, Philip Kelton says, "Yes, here's the thing. Humanity, 
Humanity have a selective memory, but what happens has happened regardless of what anyone want to pretend. Context. Yes, but the only way that we know what happened in terms of history is through what's been written. And what's written is written from the perspective of the people that were involved in the events. And so you're never getting an objective. History can never be objective. It's not possible because it's written from subjective people's subjective points of view. Uh, all of which we need to piece ah all of which we need to piece together and evaluate but we're only ever going to evaluate it ah fuck me about as well as I can play this shit oh no why didn't I lay down <laughs> just execution style that lady's arms are very wiry. That right. freaks me out. You right. Answer me. Right. Okay, let me let me I'm I'm actually more interested in the comments here than I am in the game. But let me let me see what I can do here. I need to get into this room and I need to turn on the Ah, mm -hmm. uh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Ow. It's the enemy. I need What's going on? Respond. Communications with Strut C have ceased. Carry out that investigation immediately. Don't carry out that investigation. Aha, uh -huh. there's a ration. Why are there so many gifs of, they're not gifs, uh, JPEGs of bikini ladies in this? It's like a Duke Nukem game. Alright, let's let this, let's let the heat die down and I'll read some more comments. Uh, Philip, or no, Pensazoid, you'll be 33 in August. Congratulations, it's a good age. Philip Kelton says context. Uh, Brendan Nelson, oh snap, you got the, you got to the riding part. I did. Philip Kelton says the fact that you can the, f the fact that you can like talk about how the perspective of things can get lost is in itself objective. Well, yes, I can describe the fact that I, I can I can describe our ability to transmit information about his about our own history, and I can describe the fact that our ability to do that is incapable of being objective because we're writing documents and making statements from our own perspective about it. Um, but the fact that I'm stating that as an objective, as a semi-objective fact, I mean, you have to presuppose that we're rational agents to begin with and all that kind of stuff. Eventually you get to the level where none of our statements can be justified. You get to, a, we have unjustified presuppositions at the foundation of all of our stuff, but assuming that those are true, then yes, I'm, I'm making an objective statement about the subjectivity of history. Yes, correct. It's real and you can work based on it. Yes! I don't understand the meaning of that quote. Which quote? Fuck, I'm going to get spotted, aren't I? Because I don't have my damn radar. Now I will. It's such an obvious mistruth. Oh, do you mean the one about Shakespeare? Yeah, the, uh, well, that's, um, interestingly enough, there was a, um, I don't, don't quote me on the nationality of the person who said this, but I want to say that it was a German during the Nazi era who insisted that, oh, fuck me. I want to say that it was a German during the Nazi era who insisted that Shakespeare, that Shakespeare was German, and um, he tried to claim uh, tried to claim Shakespeare for Germany, and that was the inspiration for the. Oh no, he's in there. No, don't no, leave him alone, dude. Leave him alone. He's hiding. Okay, let's get out of here because there ain't no there ain't no shit in here anymore. 
I wish they would make a Metal Gear Solid a movie. Uh, you know what? I don't think I could take or leave a Metal Gear Solid movie. Th this, th this is... The great thing about Metal Gear Solid is that it works primarily as a game, and most, uh, most video games aren't really like that. Most video games are, uh, can attach a suppressor, so I don't have one. I just read real fast and Pendulum said, this is a movie. I agree! Oh, I didn't mean for you to die hella bad. I'm sorry. I actually feel bad for that guy now. Uh, uh. I want to send his family a, a basket of roses or something. A surveillance camera? Oh shit. There's somebody there. Nothing here. The dry quarter must be broken. Hmm? Fuck yourself. He's gonna know something's up. Be careful, he's still in this area. Understood. Reinforcements are on the way to strike the team. Intensify security measures. Ah. Gabada, gabada. There's somebody there. Wait, why did I go to strut E? I I actually cannot remember. Does anybody remember Pliskin's? Wasn't it 80? No. Didn't he say it was supposed to take out the... You know, I've, it's been three hours. I might wrap this. I might wrap this here in a minute. But didn't he say that I was supposed to... Wait. One forty one eighty. thank you. Hmm? There's somebody there. Okay, one forty one eighty. I think you said it was the CE connecting bridge, but I can't remember. One forty one eighty. Another C4 down. There was one planted pretty high up on the ceiling. The coolant spray couldn't reach that far, so I had to get up on a stand and do it. 
Tell me a little more about Dead Cell. Dead Cell was a shadow. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that. Does anybody remember the? Uh, was I? S I wasn't supposed to leave. Oh jeez, he. Sh no, fuck. I. Okay, okay. Let's go back. Do you like Metal Gear Solid's rather philosophical take on war and politics, but the monologues are kind of tedious? At least in Call of Duty, they just put in an anti-war quote on the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think his, um, I think it's, I keep saying him, I want to make it very clear. Hideo Kojima did not create Metal Gear Solid all by his lonesome. Um, but they, its commentary on war is actually very nuanced. War is not portrayed in a bad light. Even the sort of conspiratorial nature of the Patriots and all that is portrayed in a somewhat understandable sympathetic light. Oh, fuck. I got right into this... I also like the tedious dialogues, but that's just me. I like I like a lot of dialogue anyway. And uh... guys, I can't remember where I'm supposed to go to disarm these things. What the fuck? I think what's happening here is it's getting late and I'm getting punchy. I'm just gonna wait for the heat to die down.
Well, thank you for the conversation, Philip. Always good to ha always a good thing to have. And take care. I like how the future in Star Trek Diplomacy is much more preferred over conflict, especially in TNG. So do I. So do I. I like that a lot. Damn it. Sorry if my standard art was a bit frustrating, but as a graphical designer I found frustrating when people make it sound like anything can just mean anything. It's not frustrating, I, I understand what you're saying, but anything can just mean anything, and does, will, always just mean whatever it's going to mean to the person that it's being presented to. Because uh, I feel like ignoring that we exist in pre-established contextual reality. Uh, I, 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 the, it's it's not that you don't exist, and there's a plenty of people, plenty of people who would say that, um, who, like, well, just look at Hideo Kojima being plastered, his his name being plastered all over these games. No, I don't think that the I don't think that the artist or his merits disappears along with him, but the artist does disappear in his art because the artist isn't the one experiencing it. The the audience is. And you as the artist cannot and do not control how the audience member is going to perceive it. That's what I'm saying. Ah, oh, motherfucker. You fuck this. Ha ha ha. 
future presented in Halo is kind of bleak. Yeah. Yeah, it is What the hell bit. happened? Right. Right in. Okay. Okay. Focusing on the game now for a minute. I need to force myself to. Just keep fucking up. I think I probably need to call this and go to sleep. <laughs> oh, that didn't work. A bitch. Brighton, is everything all right? Brighton, Brighton. Trying to disarm bombs so that you so that you guys don't die, you fuck faces. I think I probably need to go to bed, guys. Jack, what's going on? Answer me! Jack? Jack! The whole point was to explore and colonize other worlds, but sadly humanity brought its problems with it while doing so. Yes. Just so.
That was the problem right there. Whoops. Jack, do you need to save? Rose, no comment. About? I've killed someone. Jack, it's a battlefield. My opponents are living, breathing human beings. This isn't like the VR training. They have bodies. They have had lives. I took all that away from them. But you've got no choice if you want to survive. And yet, maybe because of the VR training, I can't help but try and block out that reality. It's the only way I can manage to fight. Jack. What? I don't care what it takes, just as long as you come back alive. Do whatever it takes, please. 
Just come back in one piece. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching this and listening to some of my commentaries about the meaning of this game and art in general. I will see you guys next time as we continue Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Take care and God bless.